we're back with our 2024 lead and yet another Republican candidate officially jumping into the race today. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez is set to speak at the Ronald Reagan Library this evening. He will be the first major Hispanic candidate to join the already crowded Republican field in 2024. CNN's Kyung Law joins us now live from the Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California. Kyung, uh, Suarez leaned heavily into his family roots in his campaign launch video to say nothing of all the uh, very impressive uh, running. Uh, what are we expecting to hear from him tonight? <laughs> Uh, well, he won't be physically running, although he is announcing that he is running for president. We are expecting, based on the remarks that we've gotten, advanced remarks that we've gotten from the campaign, that he is going to talk much more about his immigrant roots, the tales that he heard growing up in the Cuban-American family and how his family and his political success really embody that American success story. He's going to talk about the success in Miami and how that stands in contrast with the partisan rancor in Washington, D.C. But his essential message is that it's time for the Republican Party to pick a new generation leader and someone who is talking and not shouting or lecturing. So that's the thesis of his running. What you will not hear him talk about is Donald Trump. His argument is that it's time for this party to stop talking about Donald Trump. And it is something that is, though, very difficult given that Trump is the pace setter for this entire Republican primary. What he is going to be uh, asked about on this campaign trail, though, is his late entry into this race, how he did not vote for Donald Trump and how he is going to make the debate stage. Though this is, those are the challenges, Jake, that lie ahead for this mayor in Miami. We are anticipating his speeches take place uh, starting uh, later this evening. Jake. Very interesting. Kyung Law, thanks so much. Let's discuss. Well, that's interesting. He, he might be the only Republican nominee, correct me if I'm wrong, who will, it, it, running for president right now, who admitted not, who it, admits or publicly says he didn't vote for Trump. Yes, and that will put a pretty significant ceiling on the amount of support he'll be able to get, but... I think he's a fascinating candidate. I don't think it's likely that he will be the Republican nominee. I think especially saying, I didn't vote for Trump and I didn't vote for Ron DeSantis really limits the amount of Republicans who will say, okay, you are my guy. On the other hand, he is clearly not afraid to be different. And so I'm very excited to see, can he spark some interesting conversations on the right about um, what do we do about emerging technology, startups, the economy of the future? These are the kinds of conversations we're not having a lot of right now because we're talking about the former president having been arrested and a whole bunch of other things. But Francis Suarez, I think, could lead to some interesting conversations if he makes it to the debate stage. Yeah, and and because uh, mayors do deal a lot with those issues on the on the front lines, even if you're it's not the most p uh, powerful mayorality. Um, I want you to take a look, Paul, at this uh, part of Mayor Suarez's uh, campaign video launch. In Miami, we stopped waiting for Washington to lead. America's so-called leaders confuse being loud with actually leading. All Washington wants to do is fight with each other instead of fighting for the people that put them in office. My dad taught me that you get to choose your battles, and I am choosing the biggest one of my life. I mean, he is an outsider in that sense. I mean, like, he hasn't been in Washington. I'm trying to think of the other candidates, and the, only one or two others spent no time in Washington. Yeah, I, I think he could bring an interesting voice to the party. I think it's good for the Republicans to have a, a Latino in the, in the field and, and a possibly in the debates, although I'm not sure he can make the threshold. Uh, I, I think it's good that he's young, although he is older than Ron DeSantis. Is that right? I think he's like a year older than uh, Governor DeSantis. But I, I, I do like the idea of a lane for somebody who voted against Donald Trump and against Ron DeSantis. Uh, I suspect that's a, it's a quite narrow lane in the Republican Party since he's already cast votes against the He endorsed Andrew Gillum the first time uh, DeSantis ran, the Democrat. He did? He did. He was a fellow mayor, I suppose. Uh, yeah. But that's odd. <laughs> and Gillum's career didn't end up in the best place. Florida politics is a lot of fun, Jake. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, look, one of the things that has, I think, whenever I have seen Mayor Suarez speak to, say, rooms full of Republican donors, things, he always gets people talking. And part of it is the story that he tells about how he was going to try to bring these companies from Silicon Valley to Miami, setting up that contrast that Republicans really like between Florida and California. 
as beautiful, sunny places that uh, have very different approaches to governance and taxation and housing affordability and what have you. And so, you know, Mayor Suarez was going to make Miami the crypto city, the crypto capital of the world, those sorts of things. Now, the crypto industry's fallen on a little bit of hard times, et cetera. So there are some questions, I think, about how much resonance that particular story will have with a Republican base audience. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I think he raises some interesting questions about what does the Republican Party of the future look mm -hmm. like? And even if it's not Francis Suarez right now, I, I think he's an interesting addition to the mix. One thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, Paul, um, Biden's campaign manager is now being uh, forced to defend the decision by the Biden campaign to not fundraise off of Trump's indictment uh, and arrest. Uh, Julie Chavez Rodriguez told CNN, quote, it's so important that we restore the integrity of the Department of Justice and ensure that they are an independent entity and agency and that they continue to do their job in these most critical moments. And so for us, that separation, that independence is core, and it's not something that we will second guess or deliberate. On the other hand, you have uh, Donald Trump, who has raised at least $7 million since uh, his indictment was announced uh, Thursday evening. Uh, what, what do you right, make of Trump it? Trump no longer has any power over the Justice Department, and Biden does. And I think that's the right distinction. How refreshing to have a president who's not actually politicizing the justice system and the Justice Department. It's, of course, I think, absolutely the right decision. I would have no problem with a, a member of Congress or the Senate. They don't, they don't really control the Justice Department. I, don't, I really don't have a problem with other politicians raising money off this. But I, I think the president has got to be separate from this. Complete. He needs to not talk about it. He shouldn't raise money off it. By the way, We'll see on the June 30th uh, report how much money he raised. He should raise plenty of money, and he already has Donald Trump to raise the money for him. In other words, a lot of Democrats are terrified of the notion of Trump coming back, and they're going to give money to Biden. So he's going to raise plenty of money without it. It would, it would really be uh, awful if they were to try to raise money off this. The counterargument, I understand what you're saying. The counterargument might be the Republicans are already accusing Joe Biden of pushing to have his chief rival arrested and jailed. I mean, they're already saying that, and not just fringe people, but U.S. senators and, and, uh, and, and you know, people that you might like. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, if they're going to do it anyway, why not at least make some money off it? I think that in this one, Paul's not entirely wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to say it. I had to get it in. Uh, We're look, getting mugs made. I, I, I really think that in this case, the stakes are too high for our republic, for the prosecution of Donald Trump to be politicized any more than it, at the absolute minimum level that it will, it will be, and for Biden to add anything to that mix would be devastating, especially for Republicans that right now are kind of taking what the position articulated by Nikki Haley, which is, I think that the prosecution is political, but I'm also troubled by the allegations. You do not want to put any fuel on the fire of the first part of that statement if you are President Biden, because that's what's going to wind up making it harder for Republicans in that field to make the second part of the argument. Yeah, no, it makes complete sense, but I, I wanted to poke you guys and get you to say something. <laughs> Kristen and Paul, thanks so much for being here.